a subscriber to this channel is asking how we can add a reply to a reply. So basically how we can create multiple layers of nested replies. Let's explore this concept now. Here's a quick demo of what we're going to build. So I have here my comment, nesting replies is fun. I add here now a parent reply, then a child, then a grandchild, then a great grandchild. And at one point I might want to stop the nesting, so I just hide the reply button. All right, this is what we're going to build today. Let's jump right into it. Here's my current post page. Let's add a new comment. Nesting reply is fun. And now let's add the first reply, the parent reply. But right now we have no functionality to actually reply to this reply here. So first let's add a reply link to this reply. Let's go to our code. I'm going to my reply.html file. So it's in the templates, in the post folder, and here it is. Let's rearrange first a bit the diffs and styles in here, so our reply link sits at the bottom of this reply element. For this I wrapped the two diffs we have at the moment in another diff. Like this and move the flex classes to this div now. Then I adjust the classes in my reply container. So I create a block element with a top padding and top margin. And I add now the reply element to the bottom here. All right, save this file. Now we introduce some new Tailwind CSS classes. So I start a Tailwind script now to make sure those classes are also reflected in the style sheet. For this I open a new terminal window and call it Tailwind. Then I go into the node folder and run the Tailwind script. npm run Tailwind. All right, I switch back to Python now. And let's have a look now at our reply link. I refresh the page. And our reply link is here now. Great. Should you encounter that the styles are not applied to the page now, then the browser might have cached the old style sheet and you need to do a hard reload of the page. Now when I click the link here, I expect an input field to appear where I can add my reply. Let's code this now. And for this, I'm using HTMX. If you're not familiar with HTMX yet, check out my backend tutorial part 13 for a quick introduction. So here my reply element, I will add now some HTMX attributes. First, we have the hxget attribute. This link will be mapped to a reply form function, which we will create in the backend in a second. Then we tell HTMX here to target this A element to be replaced with the response from the backend. And we swap it with outer HTML. That means the whole element will be replaced. Okay, save this file. Now let's add the URL. So in the core folder, to urls.py. Here just below reply send, I add my new path. This path is calling the reply form function, which we will create now. We save this file and we go to the views.py file in the post folder here. So just below the reply send function here, I add here my reply form function. So I make sure the user is logged in. I call it reply form. 
First, let's get the reply object. This is important later to connect the reply to the right parent reply. Then we create here the form. We could use here the form we created before to create a reply. However, I want to style it a bit differently. So I'm just creating a new one. Then I create here the context. So we're sending back the reply object and the reply form object. And we add the return statement. So I'm sending back a HTMX snippet here. And the snippet includes the form. Also this add reply form.html file we will create in a second. Okay, we can save this file. Now let's create a form. So in our forms.py file, let's find the reply create form. There we have it. It's basically going to be the same form, just with a different styling. So I copy this class and change it to nested reply create form. And what I change here is how the form looks like. So I will change the attributes here and add some autofocus so the cursor automatically moves to the input field and also a couple of new classes. All right, save this file. And now let's create the HTML file. So in my templates, I go to snippets and I add here a new file, the add underscore reply form dot html and here I simply add my form here we include the CSRF token this is our reply form and the reply button all right save this file and let's check it out what we have so far so I refresh the page and if I click the reply link now, I expect to get this reply form from the backend. And there we go. That worked. Great. Now let's carry on. When I add my reply here, I would like to trigger again a HTMX request. And I expect to see the newly created reply. So I'm adding here a hx post attribute. I again call the reply form function, but this time as a post request. Then again, I target this element and I swap the outer HTML. All right, this is done. Save this file and let's implement now the post method functionality. So back to our views.py file. And in here, I say if request.method is post, I grab the form with the form content. I check if the form is valid. Then I create here my nested reply object. So first I save it with commit false. Then I add the author, which is the request.user. Then I add here the parent of this reply, which is the object we defined at the top here. Now, our reply model class for now doesn't have this property yet, because until now the parent could only be a comment. But now also a reply object can be the parent. We will add this property to the model class in a second. Okay, and then we save this object in the database. When this is done, we send this newly created object back to the frontend with the reply HTML code. Okay, we save this file. And let's add now the parent reply property to our model class. So we go to models.py. So here we have our reply class. At the moment, we only define a parent comment. So I copy this line. and change this to parent reply. I connect to the reply table. But this gives me a warning, reply is not defined. And that's because I'm calling this reply class itself. But we can make it work by wrapping it in parentheses. 
like that. Okay? Then I'm also adding null and blank is true to declare that this field is not required. And the same goes for the parent comment. A reply can have either a comment or a reply as a parent now. Save this file. Okay, let's make now the migration to the database. So we shut down the server, control C. Then Python managed to pi make migrations. Python managed to pi migrate. And Python managed to pi run server. All right, let's test this now. We should be able now to send a reply to the backend and then see the reply in the browser. Okay, I refresh the page. Here I create now a child reply. So child. And we got the child reply back. Awesome. Let's add another child here. A grandchild. And this works for any consecutive reply now as well. So, but what we notice here, the reply link is missing now from the parent reply. This is because we replace it basically with each child reply. But we can add the link back in using HTMX's out of band attribute. Okay, let's go back to the code. And this out of band attribute I will add to our reply form file. So this form is basically replaced with a new reply when we get the data from the backend. So here I'm adding now a placeholder on top. This is just an empty A element with the unique ID of the reply object. And we will replace it with the code of a new reply link generated by the backend. Okay, let's save this file. And now let's go to our reply.html file. This is the code we get back from the backend. And here at the bottom, I create now this out of band element. So I'm grabbing here the reply element and make a copy of it at the bottom of the page. But I'm also adding here the hx swap OOB attribute. So out of band equals to true and it will replace the element with the same ID on the page. So let's add this ID to this element as well. But the value for this ID this time is the parent ID because the code on this page represents the child now. And the same goes for the hxget attribute as well. So I copy the same value and paste it in here. Okay. Now this link will give me an error because the first reply has a comment as a parent and doesn't have a parent reply ID. So I'm just wrapping this in a condition. So if a parent reply ID exists, show this code. Okay, let's save this file. Let's check it out. So I refresh the page. But now our child and grandchild reply disappeared. This is because we only show one reply at a time. If you want to show all the nested replies, we can just add a reply loop to the code. Let's do that now. So in our reply.html file, just underneath here, I'm adding here the loop of all the replies. Okay, let's save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page. And there we go. We can see the child and the grandchild. However, two reply links appear here as well. This is because our reply.html file has this reply link now at the bottom of the page. We can simply hide this code. So here I'm placing this code in a hidden wrapper. In this way, this code is hidden on the page and HTMX just takes this element and injects it on the page. All right, save this file and let's check it out again. I refresh the page. The links are gone. 
let's add a sibling. And as we can see here, the reply link appeared now again after adding a new reply. Awesome! Now let's also fix the delete function. Right now the delete function is giving us an error because it uses the parent comment in the redirect. Let's change this now to just simply delete the reply from the page without the redirect. Again, we will use HTMX to achieve this. So in the views, we find this function. There we go, we have the reply delete view here. And I want just simply to delete the reply when the user clicks the link. Reply.delete. And then we send back an empty response. So I can simply say return HTTP response of blank. And I get rid of all this code here. Okay, let's save this file. Now let's add the HTMX attributes to the delete link. Let's head over to the reply.html file. And we find the code where we delete the reply. So here's the reply link. Now let's transform this into an HTMX call. So instead of href, we have hx-get. I also add the class cursor pointer to the element, so it appears as a link on the page. All right. Then our target is this reply, and I add here the ID of this reply. So let's add the ID on top as well here. And then we swap it as outer HTML. Okay, that's done. Save this file. Let's check it out. I refresh the page. Let's delete the grandchild. And it works. And the child. Perfect. Let's add them back in again. This all works now. Great. Let's take a look at the very last feature now, and this is to add a stop to the nesting. We might not want to nest forever, right? For this, I'm checking if the reply has reached a certain level, and then just don't show the reply link anymore. All right, so first, let's add a level property to our reply model class. Let's go to the model.py file. And here I'm adding now the level property. So this is just an integer field with a default value of 1. So the first reply we add is at level 1. And with each child, we increase this value by 1. OK, let's save this file. And let's do the migration. Control C. Python manage to pi make migrations. Python manage to pi migrate. And Python manage to pi run server. OK. Now we have updated our database with the new property. Let's go to our views.py file and add the functionality. So back to the reply form function. There we go. So here before I save my nested reply, I increase the reply level by one. So I take here the parent reply, access the level value, and just increase the value by one. OK, save this file. And now in our front end, so in reply.html, I go to my reply link. It's this one here. I just add here condition. So if the level of the reply is smaller than 5, I am showing the reply link. Otherwise, users can't reply anymore. OK, let's save this file and let's check it out. So I delete first all the replies because we added a new property. I refresh the page and let's add now our replies. So first we have the parent. 
then the child, then the grandchild. We are here at level three. Then we have the great grandchild. And the next level is level five and we shouldn't see the reply link anymore. And there we go. We put a stop here now to the nesting. All right, that's it. We created nested replies. How useful they are is up to you to decide, but they are definitely fun to play around with. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to this channel and check out my other videos for some awesome front-end and back-end tutorials. Stay curious, my friends, and bye-bye.